term turning the light around begin. It began with the adept Wen Shi. When the light is turned around, the energies of heaven and earth, yin and yang, all congeal. This is what is called refined thought, pure energy, or pure thought. When you first put this technique into practice, there is seemingly non-being within being. Eventually, when the work is accomplished and there is a body beyond your body, there is seemingly being within non-being. Hi, and welcome to the third chapter of The Secret of the Golden Flower. Well, by now it's not much of a secret, is it? <laughs> Turn the light around. What more do you need to know? Well, we are going through these various descriptions in order to understand the consequences and the meaning of this method. Now, in ordinary thinking, yin and yang, heaven and earth, light and dark, good and bad, male and female, are all opposites. And, for example, in the body we have the right eye and the left eye. They see differently because one represents the male energy, the other represents the female energy. Yang and yin, heaven and earth. But when those two energies meet in the center, in the square inch, the third eye, Agnya Chakra, then they merge, not in the ordinary way, but when the light is turned around, when the flow of energy, instead of going out, begins to come in. This is the secret. Why is it a secret? Because no one would think of it ordinarily, and no one would try to experience it either unless they had some clue. So the whole purpose of this secret of the golden flower as a scripture is to give you that clue so that you can practice it. If you don't practice it, really, you're wasting your time. If you're watching these videos and then you don't go after the video and sit down and try it, you're wasting your time. Huh? This is a time now on this earth when it doesn't really serve us to try to do anything big. We can only accomplish in times of chaos that which is small and intimate, something within our own self. It's not a good time to make big plans or try to put together some venture with others because right now there's too much darkness, too much confusion, too much chaos in society. So the best alternative right now is to work on yourself. Of course, in one way, it's always the best alternative. But even in times of plenty, even in times of harmony, in times of light, still we have to face death, we have so many problems to overcome. And the best choice or the best alternative, the best purpose to use our energy, to engage it for our own well-being is to work on ourselves. And here we have the most powerful process, one step process, turn the light around. It's not easy because there's so much habit built up of letting the light go out, leaking the energy. Huh? There are seven chakras in the human body. 
and all of them are leaking energy out into the world. It's called compulsive extroversion. And it's taught to us in school, it's conditioned into us by media, by society, by family. Pay attention. <laughs> There'll be, there's going to be a test. <laughs> Didn't you listen to what I said? What's the matter with you? See, we get all of this dumped on us, heaped on us, this kind of abuse, this kind of uh, conditioning for many, many years. And as a result, we're always tense. We're always alert on the outside, but we're completely asleep on the inside. That should be reversed. Nothing very interesting, nothing very important is going to happen on the outside. You see, the only things we can count on are the things that happen on the inside. Why? Because everything on the outside is constantly changing. The scientists are always contradicting themselves. Huh? The doctors, one last decade, they were blaming heart attacks and everything on salt and fat. Now, all of a sudden, salt and fat are okay, and it's something else. I, I don't keep up with it, you know? I just eat a nice vegetarian diet, and almost 70 years old, <laughs> I'm in perfect health. I never get flu or cold. Why? Because I'm listening inside. And when my body tells me something, I listen. I do it. I take care of the animal. Huh? It's like having a pet animal. <laughs> I call it my lion. <laughs> I have this pet lion. So I have to take care of him, take him for a walk every day, <laughs> make sure he gets lots of exercise and good food. Food is medicine. So we don't put food on the outside. Huh? We don't spread it all over our body. We put it on the inside because the inside is what matters. The inside is where we live. We are the awareness, the ghost in the machine, the soul in the animal. The human being in nature is like the soul of the world. Try to understand. As above, so below. So anyway, I don't want to get into uh, hermeneutics here. But I do want to point out that when we turn the light around, when we do this simple method, even though it's not easy, everything comes into harm. All the different, diverse, and apparently conflicting energies then reach a beautiful harmony, a beautiful alliance. They seem to merge into one. And what is that one? Pure awareness, emptiness. You see? So this method, which is about emptiness, in the beginning seems like emptiness or nothingness in the midst of being. Huh? That somehow we have to go inside ourselves and find this emptiness, find this space, so that we can turn the light around and it has some place to go. Well, of course, it's already there. And that awareness, that emptiness, is actually the self, the real self, the ego, the mind, the senses, the body, what to speak of possessions, relationships, activity, and so on, those are false. Why? They're always changing. And one of these days will come a change called death. And when that change comes, we need to be well-rooted in that which does not change. Think about it. What are the things that are inevitable? What are the things that never change? Friends change. Business always changing. Knowledge changes. Even science, even physics, always changing, always evolving. What to speak of fashion, language, politics, everything in the world 
Everything out there is always changing. We can't count on it. Today, a friend, tomorrow becomes enemy. Huh? But what is it that we can count on? We can count on death. Death is going to be there. Enemies are going to be there. My enemies are far more steady than my friends. <laughs> I hate to say it. Friends come and go. But enemies seem to remain forever. <laughs> anyway, we can count on there being opposition. We can count on there being differences. We can count on conflict. We can count on misunderstanding. The rare thing, the transient thing, understanding, love, beauty, knowledge, wealth, huh? all these things come and go. They change all the time. But what can we count on? We're going to lose everything. We're going to die. We're going to lose this body, this mind, this identity, this personality, this knowledge, even consciousness. All is going to be lost. That's for sure. Nobody has ever escaped death. So try to understand. We should be planning on those things which are inevitable. We should not be planning on those things which are transient. Because who knows? Here today, gone tomorrow. In fact, the gone tomorrow is the only thing we can count on. <laughs> so, don't make plans that require anybody else's cooperation. Because that only leads to trouble. Only leads to failure. Do those things you can do for yourself that will help you deal with the inevitable. Death, emptiness, loss, nothingness. All these things are absolutely certain. It is absolutely certain that we're going to die and leave this world. Where are we going to go? Have you supplies? Have you a vehicle? Have you the necessities of traveling apart from the body? That's what this is all about. That's what spiritual methods are about in general. And all of them without any exception that I'm aware of, use this principle of turning the energy around. Just some do it in different places. In Tantra, for example, one is turning around the energy in the first chakra. Instead of orgasm in Tantra, we sublimate the energy, turn it into something higher. Hmm? Or yoga, Qigong uses the second chakra and the energy chakra. Yoga uses the third chakra. Bhakti uses the fourth. Uh, mantras uses the fifth. Jnana and me meditation uses the sixth. But ultimately they are all about the seventh chakra, ecstasy. And how do we get ecstasy? Turn the light around. I should make a song about it, huh? <laughs> Maybe I will. Make it the theme song instead of that song that I wrote, that instrumental piece called Flying. But that's the theme song now. But anyway, we'll see. If I get the inspiration, I'll do it. So, this spiritual life is a matter of heart. Not the ordinary heart in the chest, but the heavenly heart between the two eyes. If our heart is correct, then everything goes nicely without any plan, without any knowledge, without any technique. All we need is that one thing to turn the energy around and situate it in its proper place. Then everything lines up. Everything comes into harmony around it. This is the secret of happiness, of peace, both individual and in society. Now, the thing is, this turning the light around and this innocence, this purity, spontaneity that results from it, has to be based on the proper knowledge. 
Only one thing we need to know, that this heavenly heart is the real center. Then everything goes automatically. No need for plans, no need for elaborate structures and arrangements for systems. Huh? This is a system, this uh, teaching is a non-system system. <laughs> it has one element, turn the light around. Situate the backward flowing motion in the Agya Chakra. Everything else you can just let go and enjoy. Be like a child, be spontaneous, and you will do no wrong. Now the difficulty comes when we are not pure, when the energy is still leaking all over the place, and then we try to live spontaneously. It's going to result in disaster. Why? Because then the lower heart will think, oh, I can act just however I want. No restrictions. Oh, great. <laughs> so it's like a Instead of like an innocent, beautiful child, it's like an ugly, nasty, disobedient, horrible child, violent, angry child. Have you ever seen a small child throw a temper tantrum, especially in a public place? Oh, it's just so embarrassing, you know. And the parents are just like, oh God, they want to like melt into the floor. They just don't want to be there. Why? Because childhood should be beautiful. Childhood should be innocent, loving, accepting, full of wonder, huh? surprises, unanticipated things. Well, we're going to experience unanticipated things anyway <laughs> because of the limitations of our intelligence. So how can we enjoy them? How can they stop being nasty surprises and instead become beautiful wonder? and amazing, beautiful, innocent experiences. It's having our energy aligned in the right way. That's all. If that is there, if that is in place, everything else goes very nice. I want to talk a little bit about Chinese religion. In Chinese religion, there is worship. But it's not worship of a God out there someplace. Huh? Turn the light around. Rather, a Chinese religion is the invocation and the worship of the innocence within, the pure spirit, the original qi, as it's called. The original qi, again, resides in the heavenly heart and it's a backward flowing, inward motion, which is perfectly innocent. No plans, no desires, no expectations, no requirements. Yet there are principles that can be derived from this for ordering one's life and ordering the society in a beautiful way. So things like honesty, perseverance, purity, humility, wisdom, all are derivative of that original innocence, that original chi. And when that chi is located on the throne, again, another image or metaphor for the backward flowing motion, then Everything seems to line up right. We get synchronicity. We get beautiful spontaneity. We experience wonder. And things that happen that we don't expect become a source of joy because we're not clinging. If we're clinging at all, we're only clinging to that beautiful light. And when we turn this energy around, it becomes manifest like the full moon on the horizon of the mind, in the sky of the heart that guides us in every way, without words, without symbols, without a complex structure or morality. No need for any of those things. The need is for consciousness, awareness, 
and being. That is the secret of the golden flower. 